Well, it is Thursday and I am back in the office. I was in Berks County, Pennsylvania this morning representing a client. It was a open guilty plea in Berks County. Uh, I've, done, I've done articles on open pleas and, and why we do them. In this particular case, the evidence, unfortunately, was very overwhelming in favor of the Commonwealth. So the Commonwealth had made an offer. The offer was a state prison sentence in our open guilty plea. I made the argument that the court, if it was inclined to, to sentence the defendant, uh, our client, uh, to uh, incarceration, that it do so in a in, uh, to, to county incarceration. That's what the court did. So we came out a lot better than what the client would have received had we negotiated the plea. And we made the decision to go with an open plea as opposed to a negotiated plea, because I was confident that once we presented mitigation evidence to the court, and based on my understanding of the sentencing guidelines, the client's prior record score, the client's background, the client's family, and also the judge's sentencing philosophy, I felt very confident in our open plea, and it worked out very well. So it was a good result today, despite it being a non-trial disposition. It was still a good result. It shows that you can have a case where even though the evidence is overwhelming and you're going to face some type of consequences for your actions, we can do a lot to mitigate and put you on the right path back to a successful life. So with that said, also came with a blog article regarding what is occurring in the NHL community uh, with regards to four players being charged with sexual assault in London, Ontario, Canada. Now, I put the blog article out to really show just the differences between the systems here in the U.S. and what they have in Canada. Now, frequently, uh, I receive questions about criminal charges out of the states of New Jersey and Pennsylvania, where a law firm is practiced, and I comment. Now, obviously, I'm not licensed in Canada or, any, or anywhere outside the U.S., but the case brings an important opportunity to show both criminal prosecution and civil liability. Now, in this particular case, these individuals, there was a civil suit that was settled by Hockey Canada, which is the organization that runs uh, Team Canada, which is what these uh, these players play for. Now, there was an allegation of sexual assault. Sexual assault is defined very broadly in Canada, just as, as, it's, uh, as it's defined very broadly in the U.S. It's basically just a unlawful touching sexual in nature so that can that can include obviously any type of touching in the in uh, private areas if you will also with regards to the way it's written in some states including um, in, outside the US uh, kissing so in the case of uh, Deshaun Watson that was the allegation there I believe now again this case brings just a similarity to the, the Deshaun Watson case but in that particular case Mr. Watson was not charged criminally he was not indicted I've done blog articles on that regarding the burden of proof now the burden of proof in Canada it appears to be similar to what is required in the U.S. Uh, these individuals it's my understanding are going to be indicted I believe that I didn't hear anything about a grand jury, so I'm not particularly familiar with the with the indictment system in Canada, but I'm sure the, the, the defense counsels will be looking at possible motions to quash or dismiss the indictment. Uh, that will probably be the first line of defense there. It's also my understanding that this particular crime can be an indictable crime, which is our version of a felony here in the U.S., or it can be considered a basically a summary offense where the maximum punishment is basically a um, fine or probation of some sort. So uh, it's a it's a, it, it's what's known as a hybrid crime in Canada. In the U.S., we don't have that type of of distinction regarding a hybrid type crime. At least we don't have that in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with that case. I'm going to link in the blog article that I wrote on that. I'm also going to link in the blog article that I wrote on Deshaun Watson's case, just to show kind of the 
what happened in that case. It provides a good understanding of the different justice systems outside of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And as always, I draw similarities to show people just kind of how the laws are somewhat similar and, that, and obviously somewhat unique. But again, if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey, website gambleandlaw.com. As always, a tremendous resource for you and your family. All my books, my blogs, my videos are available there in one convenient format. Tomorrow is Friday, our weekly e-update, which will go out to over 4,000 of our current and former clients in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Our mailed update went out today for February. So every month we do a mailed monthly newsletter. We do a weekly blog. It goes out every Friday. I blog during the week. And then on Friday, we have our wrap-up. I do these videos. We put out our books. We want our clients to be educated because we believe that an educated client is in the best possible position to receive a great result in their case. But once again, if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey. I'm losing my voice talking a lot today in court. But once again, have a great Thursday, and I'll talk to you all very soon.